Well, I would call last night a success. I've had a chance to take a look at the images, the fit files on Deep Sky Stacker to look at them, and sure enough, they came through just great. Uh, they look nice and colorful of the Veil Nebula. The only problem was... Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Jones and welcome back to the Astro Backyard. Tonight I'll be using a new astrophotography camera here in the backyard, the QHY 268C. Now this is a one-shot color, 26 megapixel, dedicated astronomy camera. This cooled CMOS sensor is in crop sensor format, APS-C, so a very familiar field of view for anyone that shoots with an intermediate level DSLR, say a Canon 80D, or even the Rebel series. Those are that crop sensor format. The plan is to take a picture of the incredible Western Veil Nebula in Cygnus through my 100 millimeter refractor. So I'll share the picture at the end of the video and I hope you stick around for another night of deep sky astrophotography. Just to give you an idea of the imaging configuration for tonight, it's the Skywatcher Spree 100 Refractor APO. So wide focal length, 550 millimeters. I've got a small guide scope on top, the Starfield, a small guide camera, the ZWO ASI 120mm Mini. Of course, the QHY 268 camera on the back. I've got the Optolong L Extreme filter in there, which is brand new and it's all riding on the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. I'm continuing to control my imaging sessions with this Acer Enduro N3 laptop. It's been very great. It's a computer meant for being outside, even though it's the summer and not exactly demanding conditions. But installing the QHY software on my computer wasn't such a big deal. QHY has a bit of a reputation there for some interesting things that come up uh, in terms of user experience with their software, some broken English in the manual, stuff like that. But I think they're getting a lot better. To be honest, everything went off without a hitch for this 268C, but I know it's one of their newest cameras and they're really trying to get better with their whole user experience. So bravo QHY, well done. So it's a clear Friday night, but there will be a bright moon up coming out around midnight, 80% illuminated. So to deal with that, I'm gonna be using the Optolong L Extreme filter, which is a new dual band pass filter, truly dual band pass. It's a seven nanometer passes in HA and O3, and that's it, nothing else. None of that pesky H beta. So it's an interesting choice for those of you in the city that want kind of that all in one, one shot color dual band pass filter. So still testing that one out, but I've got a good feel about the Veil Nebula with this one. The QHY 268C is the first crop sensor dedicated astronomy camera that I've used since the ZWO ASI 071MC Cool back when I called anything that wasn't a DSLR a CCD camera. So this CMOS dedicated astronomy camera has that nice 26 megapixel sensor. The pixel size is 3.76 microns, which is actually really small. It's the same size as the 533, but of course with that much bigger sensor. QHY reached out to me directly to test the 268C, so I will have to send it back, but I wasn't compensated in any way. I just get to play with them and send them back, and hopefully you guys appreciate that. When you're considering a new camera to pair with your telescope for astrophotography, you really need to think about image scale and field of view. There's some great calculators online, and I'll leave one in the description to get an idea of this, but the big one is dividing the pixel size by the focal length of your telescope. So at the native focal length of 550 on the Esprit 100 and this camera, I get an image scale of 1.4, which is right in the sweet spot between one and two. So the images won't be too soft, nor they, will they be too blocky. And blocky sharpens things up, but you also really don't get those round soft stars when you zoom in. So I see why people don't wanna be 
oversampled. I always get it wrong. Oversampled is under 1.0, undersampled is over two. With the reducer that I'm using here, the Starazona Apex ED 0.65 reducer, that brings me back to 357 millimeters. And at that focal length, I get an image scale of 2.1. So just over the recommended range of between 1.0 and 2.0, but a closer to the sharper side, which I like. So I really think I nailed the image scale with this system here and I'm excited to see the images. Okay, now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna polar align and star align this rig to get ready to take some pictures. And there's actually two QHY cameras on this rig right now. Let me know in the comments if you know the other one. I'm in the garage now and the camera is running outside. Everything went really smooth considering this is the first time I've used the 268C out in the backyard. So I'm shooting the Witch's Broom, the Western Veil Nebula in Cygnus. And because of this wide field of view with the telescope and the reducer I'm using and that APS-C size sensor, I'm able to get in a lot of the Veil Nebula complex. So I framed it up so the Witch's Broom is kind of near the top right and then lots of that nebulosity in the Cygnus loop, Pickering's triangle is in there as well. So I'm really excited about that framing to play with it. So even though things look really well out of astrophotography tool right now, the preview images, uh, I'm not out of the woods yet. I still need to extract that data, stack it and process it to make sure I didn't make any mistakes in the binning or the gain and offset values. I'm really experimenting with it, but uh, I've got a good feeling about this picture. As for the filter I'm using, the Optolong L Extreme, I'll continue to test that, but I think it's pretty clear about what this filter does. And a lot of people are saying that it is an improvement over the L Enhance because it is so directly isolating those seven nanometer band passes in HA and O3 without any extra light pollution coming in. So for a one shot color camera, especially one like the 268C, it seems like a really great choice. And I've seen a few other astrophotographers use this exact combination and get some really amazing results. So I think it's a good combo and uh, I think I'll be using this for the rest of the summer, to be honest with you, this exact configuration because there's a few more projects I wanna try with it. I've had a chance to take a look at the images, the fit files on Deep Sky Stacker to look at them and sure enough they came through just great. Uh, they look nice and colorful of the Veil Nebula. The only problem was my backspacing wasn't correct so there's some pretty nasty elongated stars around the edges but of course I can just crop those out. Ideally I wouldn't have to do that and utilize that full APS-C frame but uh, live and learn. So obviously there's some issues with my backspacing. I believe I'm a little too far out. Uh, 55 millimeters is what you need to get with the reducer that I'm using. But I think what I'm gonna do right off the bat is just not use that Apex reducer and just use the standard focal corrector for the Esprit 100 and shoot at the native focal length of 550 and get that backspacing correct. But that's part of the process. When you get a new camera, there's a lot of things to learn and you're not gonna just get the perfect image your first night out. That I can guarantee you. I took my images at a gain of 100, so that was the default setting when I went into the properties of connecting the camera. So I tried that first, but I've seen others using a gain of zero and getting good results. So maybe I'll try knocking that down. Either way, I'm really happy with the results so far with this camera. The biggest takeaway for me is that I feel like I'm using a DSLR camera with that APS-C sensor, that nice wide field of view. Not none of those cropped fields, the super crop that I'm used to with some of those smaller sensors. So that's nice to get that DSLR field with that cooling and the advanced dedicated astronomy features is really nice. So I hope you enjoyed the picture at the end of the video and until next time, clear skies. <laughs>